Well, Manafort's tax and bank fraud trial is going to stretch into another week. The jury isn't ready to deliver a verdict yet. They've just gone home for the day, asking to be released early on this summer Friday. And while the jury was deliberating today, President Trump said this when asked about whether he would pardon Paul Manafort. I don't talk about that now. I don't talk about that now. I, I think the whole Manafort trial is very sad. When you look at what's going on there, I think it's a very sad day for our country. He worked for me for a very short period of time. But you know what? He happens to be a very good person. A very good person who is facing 18 counts of tax and bank fraud and could spend the rest of his life in jail if the jury convicts him. Joining us now, NBC News national security and justice reporter Julia Ainsley from outside the courthouse, along with Chuck Rosenberg, MSNBC contributor and former U.S. attorney and senior FBI official. So, Julia, even though uh, today ended a bit early, it was still a pretty interesting day. Uh, the jury asked to go home early, and then the judge announced that not only um, or that he is getting death threats and he's concerned about the well-being of the jurors as well. That's right, Katie. So right now we're in a weekend recess. They'll come back at 930 on Monday to continue these deliberations. What's clear so far is that this is a jury that wants to take its time. It's a complicated case. It's not like you can. It's a case of a smoking gun and someone being in one place at one time. This is more complicated when it comes to tax and bank fraud. They have 18 counts. Some are conspiracy to commit a crime. Some is committing the crime itself. And by the questions they asked yesterday, particularly about the requirements for foreign filing on foreign bank accounts, it's clear they want to be really careful. They also have mountains of documents, even more evidence than we saw during the trial, so that's a lot to go through. We saw some people coming out for periodic breaks, but for the most part, they stayed inside all day going over this. So it would make sense they would want a break. They need to break for the weekend. It seems one juror had an event they had to get to, so they left by 5 today. And now we, um, yes, are hearing that the judge is uh, having threats. I'm not sure if they're death threats, of what kind they are, but definitely threats to his security. He has a U.S. Marshal in the courtroom now who apparently escorts him around to secure his safety. And it's for that reason, Katie, that he does not want to reveal the names of the jurors even after the verdict comes. He wants to protect them because he says he's been surprised by the level of attention this case has gotten. Julia Ainsley. Julia, thank you very much. Chuck, let's get into this a little bit more. Um, when you're hearing that the jury seems to be taking its time in this mm -hmm. case, are, if you're a prosecutor, are you nervous? No. Prosecutors took their time to lay out a methodical case. The jury is taking its time to review the methodical case they laid out. And one of the questions they asked the other day struck me as really interesting along those lines, Katie. They wanted the judge to tell them of that big stack of exhibits they had, which counts did they pertain to? And the judge, of course, said, I can't do that. You have to do that. And so they're going to match exhibits to counts in the indictment and try to make sense of it. They're taking their time to get it right. Harry Lippman was on with us yesterday, and he said there's zero chance of an acquittal. Would you agree with him? There's zero chance that I will flap my arms and fly home. There is a <laughs> non-zero chance of an acquittal. I think it's very likely that they will convict. I'd be surprised if they didn't. But I would hate to ascribe a zero chance to that. I know you don't get into the politi politics of this all, but if they do come back with an acquittal or if there's a hung jury, um, what are you worried it could do to the entire special counsel investigation? So legally, nothing. Legally, it will continue as it should because that investigation is predicated on facts and law, and those don't change by virtue of an acquittal. Politically, small p politically, it matters a lot that the prosecutors win their first public trial. I'm sure they're feeling the pressure. I'm sure uh, that they want to bring home what they believe is a just and guilty verdict. Um, but facts and law don't change. The president today said he wouldn't talk about pardoning Manafort, um, but he did make a point of, of calling him a, a good guy and said yeah. it was a sad day for this country that he was on trial. In the same sentence that he said he would not talk about Manafort, he talked about Manafort, and that seems kind of odd. Was, it, was he signaling to Manafort? Possibly. I mean, it's clear to everybody involved that the president has that authority. If you're his defense lawyer, Manafort's mm -hmm. defense lawyer, are you, and you're, you're hearing that, are you thinking, hey, this could be something we can hold out hope for? Sure. You always hold out hope, I gather. I'm sure they're also holding out hope for an acquittal. 
on that point, please remember, I think it's important for your viewers to know, to be acquitted in a federal trial, the jury has to be unanimous, 12-0, just like they have to be unanimous to convict. So, you know, back to Harry's point for just a moment, I think it much more likely, highly likely they will convict. Running the table and getting acquitted on 18 counts seems very unlikely to me. So this is a financial crimes case. Mm -hmm. We would not be paying attention to it if Paul Manafort was not the president's former campaign chairman mm -hmm. and if this was not being done by the entire, by the special counsel that's investigating Russia. It is a bit of a side issue for Robert Mueller's team. It doesn't fit neatly into the Russia investigation, which is why I think people are looking at this trial and looking for any hints. And, and the fact that a, a couple of, of bench discussions were sealed I think there are folks out there, or there are folks out there, looking at that and saying that's because maybe Gates' testimony pertains to the investigation going forward and are wondering how this trial might tie into everything else. So the case itself, the things with which Manafort is charged, don't seem to be at the heart of the Russia interference investigation. But, and I think this is an important but, Katie, what does Manafort know based on his time in the... Trump campaign and in the Trump orbit. That's what Mueller and his investigators want. This is a means perhaps to that end. Is it appropriate to charge him with this stuff? Absolutely. Why? Because he committed these crimes. How do we know that? Well, I mean, the documentary evidence is pretty strong, but they want something else. Are prosecutors trying to turn him to get him to talk? Look, prosecutors are trying to turn anybody who has truthful information that will further an investigation. So I hate to turn that question on you. But if he has truthful information that will help the investigation, you bet they are. We're not even sure that they are trying to turn him, though. I mean, it could just be that they're trying to... They could just be trying to convict him. Yeah. And it could be that he has no information about anyone else, but that strikes me as unlikely. Paul Manafort, when he took the job, there has been, um, coming out in, these, in this court trial, uh, evidence that, that he had financial problems. He was um, late on his payments to American Express. There's right. talk about the money he owed owed Oleg Deripaska, the Russian mm -hmm. oligarch, when he took on uh, the Trump campaign job and didn't take any money for that job. I know we've talked about this before, but it does seem like it's something that would be, if I were a federal prosecutor, and I'm not, but if I were a federal prosecutor, would make my ears perk up. I'd want to know more about that. Well, you'd be a good federal prosecutor. And, and they absolutely want to know more. And I am certain that if they convict him, uh, they will try to still get him to cooperate. Look, we're willing as prosecutors to take cooperation at many different stages. Ideally, it's much, much earlier than this. But if after a conviction, and I believe there will be one, at least on some large number of counts, he's willing to cooperate, would the prosecutors take it? You bet. Chuck Rosenberg. Chuck, it's so great to have you. Thanks for sticking around with us it's, today. We appreciate it's it. It's a pleasure, Katie. Enjoy your weekend. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.